Hi everyone, it's Kino here. Welcome to the Kino Yoga Show. Yoga is all about strengthening both the body and the mind. So when you begin to do the yoga practice, you will experience more peace and more happiness in your entire life. And your body will feel younger and lighter and more free. You don't need to be any particular shape or size or age or anything like that to start the practice. All you need is a willingness to do the practice in an open mind. So we start every episode with some viewer questions. The first viewer question from today is about how yoga is a healing practice. And this question is, can yoga be a replacement for medication or other treatments for certain illnesses? And I would really like to say, first of all, that yoga is an immensely powerful tool to affect transformation both in the body and the mind. But I wouldn't recommend that anyone who is engaged in a course of medical, you know, medical healing or, you know, medical treatment, it stop that and think that just doing the yoga postures themselves is, is going to affect, you know, complete and total cure for whatever illness that anyone may be experiencing. So while yoga is really, really helpful, I'd actually recommend it as a part of a complementary approach to healing than a supplement or a replacement for traditional medical practices. In this way, yoga can really, again, complement whatever activities you are engaged currently in that you may actually need some additional help for. So if you talk to your doctor, your chiropractor, if you're working with any sort of spinal disorders or any um, you know, organ uh, malfunctions or something like that, yoga can really help restore that natural balance both in the body and in the mind. All right. But remember, especially if you're dealing with psychological imbalances, don't look to the yoga practice to be a cure-all, like it's gonna cure everything. It's a complementary approach and you wanna maintain um, every course of treatment that's really advised you know, by your doctor if you're, if you're working with something that's quite serious, okay? Now, the second viewer question is probably a little bit more light, so it was maybe a little bit heavy. So the second viewer question is, did I always have really muscular legs? So this is really an interesting thing for me because I was really sensitive about the shape of my legs when I was growing up and I thought, you know, wow, I mean, people always used to tell me, wow, you have such big thighs. And I mean, I heard the word big and I just thought, you know, fat. So I just thought, well, my thighs are the wrong shape. And I remember taking that on when I was really young. And so I've been kind of sensitive about like the shape of my legs. And so I find it so funny to get sort of questions and comments that are almost complimentary for, you know, the shape of my thighs or something like that. So first of all, thanks for that question because it, it's, a, it's a good mirror for sort of where I am as a person. And then and the second thing is, as you can hear, I always kind of had bigger thighs, but they weren't muscular. And it was really through the yoga practice that I developed, you know, muscle tone in the legs. So I made the transformation of my body from just being, you know, unused, you could say, to really being optimized through the journey of yoga. And, and one of the things that I really, really love about, about the yoga practice is it puts you face to face with all of your areas of uncertainty and all of your areas of shadow. And that was a really big shadow for me. And through the yoga practice, I've gotten to feel what it's like to inhabit my entire body, including my legs, which for a long time were, you know, a source of uncomfortability or insecurity, really. I mean, we've all got those areas of our body where we're insecure. I mean, just take a moment and think about it. What's a part of your body you hate? Like, we all have one part. Some people hate their hair or their lack of hair. Some people hate, you know, their arms or some people don't like their bellies or their feet or their hands or something like We've all got some place that we're insecure. So I think what's really important about doing yoga is to make friends with that place of insecurity and to not, you know, fight a war with with your body. I remember when I was younger and I was in the gym and I was sort of at the gym and I was working out and I used to think, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I remember saying to myself, I've gotta get my thighs, you know, really thin. And I just, you know, I don't think that anymore. I think about health and healing through the whole body. And that's really the gift of yoga. So whatever area is insecure in your body, make friends with it, you know. Tell, find a way to tell the story of love and appreciation for that body part. You might need to see it through the eyes of someone else. You may need to get it as a compliment from the outside world. But one day you'll be able to make friends with that part of your body. And when you do, you'll be so much more relaxed because it's a total acceptance of who you are. So that's a great segue to the topic that we're gonna look at today. I wanna work with you on core strength. And a lot of, I love core strength because it gives confidence, it gives me confidence anyway that I can be stronger, which is so much of my lesson and so much of my journey. And my teaching in the practice of yoga. Now, 
The journey of strength, often people focus on the abdominal muscles, and we're gonna do some abdominal work today, but they don't often focus on the legs. So I wanna work on how we can integrate the strength of the legs into the core of the body. So we're gonna start off um, just warming up that whole sense of integration. We're gonna do that um, by lifting the legs. So when you lift your legs, it's very important that you don't push outward, but that you use your quadriceps and pull that into the pelvic floor. Okay, so here's how we're gonna do that. Starting off to the side so you can see what I mean you're gonna point your feet then tuck your tailbone under and engage your abdominal muscles by pulling it in towards the center we'll start off with the right side and I want you to find your right hip joint and then gently pull the right hip joint into the body and lift your leg and let's hold that for five one feel your quadricep two three point your toe don't let it turn out turn it in four and five. Okay, let's do the left side. Pull the head of the left femur into its socket. Don't turn it out. Out, turn it in. One, two, three. Feeling the bird a little bit? So you want to integrate the legs into the body. Four, and five. Let's do the right side again. Pull it in with the right side. One, see if you can lift a little higher. And this time we're going to fold the head down to the knee. Two, three. Really round your back under. Four, and five. Okay, let's do the left side. Pull it in from the left side all the way up. Keep yourself positive. Don't think about the frustration. Just be with your body in the moment. Now round under, head to your knee. One, two, three, four, and set it down. I really felt my legs. I hope you did too. But now we're gonna up the ante a little bit and make it a little more intense. Okay, let's go for both. So point your toes. This time you're gonna take the fingers forward and again, curl your tailbone under like this. Pull the heads of both of your femurs into their sockets and head towards your knees. One, two, three, four, and easy, set it down. Good, we're gonna try that again. When this happens, when this movement happens, I want you to think about inwardly spiraling your energy. Like you're reaching down deep into the darkness of your pelvis. And in that space, lightness comes through the legs. And again, don't push your legs outward and up. Think about deeper down in the center. And then automatically up is happening. Okay, toes point, fingers press, and tip it back. Head to the knees. One, two, three, four, now lift your head and inhale here we are navasana everyone thinks about navasana this wonderful tool to help build strength in the body as happening all with the abdominal muscles but watch the legs the legs work lift your inner thighs towards each other and squeeze the thighs towards each other two three four now take it back up and hands off the ground head to your knees one two use your legs three four and straighten all the way up cross your feet then come all the way back to a plank posture easy step back hands above now look what happens if i let the legs go integrate the legs into the core strength and the whole body will be lifted exhale chaturanga dandasana inhale upward facing exhale downward facing from downward facing sink down onto your knees and again we're going to do a nice little movement to bring the core of the body into our inner awareness all right then round your back send your chest a little forward over the hands pull the knee to the outside with the power of your legs lift upward and point your foot towards your butt then sink it down and we're going to go up and down five five times total so we did one pull it up drop it down pull it up drop it down pull it up drop it down i think that maybe was four let's do one more pull it up drop it down and hold it down one use your thighs two three squeeze the inner thighs four pull it up five breaths here one two three four drop it down and step it back okay ready for the next side here we go, I'm gonna to turn to the front so you can get a different view and see what's happening with the right leg. So on our hands and knees, nice and steady, press through the fingers, take the palms and press them into the ground. Round your back under and then right to the outside. Try not to hike the hip, but keep the back rounded, okay? Slide it down, keep the elbow straight, slide it back up. We're gonna do that five times. So slide it down, use your thighs, slide it up. Slide it down, slide it all the way up. Three more times, slide it down, slide it up. Keep your foot off the ground, slide it down, slide it up. Two more times, slide it down, slide it up. Hold it down, one, two, three. Pull your tailbone under, connect your thighs into your pelvic floor. Four, 
pull it up, one, two, three, four, slide it out. Oh, did you feel that? I hope you felt that in the arms, the cores, and the thighs, rest in child's pose. Nice long inhalation and nice long exhalation. Then let's take it all the way up. And now, what many people don't think about is that your legs are all the way connected through the back of the body. So now we're gonna do some easy leg lifts that are gonna help you integrate the movements with your body, okay? So stretch your legs out completely long and in alignment with your body, point your toes completely. Turn your hip forward, all right? Then elongate your muscles along the back. Hold your hip in place and inhale, lift your leg. And we're just gonna go up and down and count to 20 on your own. Own, okay so you can follow my movement or you can just count to 20 right on your own and don't hike your hip up nice and steady you can keep looking right at your toes and make sure that both thighs are nice and firm and you want to feel the movement happening right along the outside of your hips almost like your heel is what's reaching rather than your toes and this is again you want to feel this movement connecting deep into the core of the body through the legs so make sure the belly is sucked in and the ribs are pulled in and if you want to you can even lie all the way down i find it a little more stable if i'm holding on if you're starting to feel a burn right around this side that's a thumbs up from the body keep it going after a few more we're probably up to about 20. Do not try to go up too high. Just be stable. Take it up and hold. And see, I'm turning my hip forward. That's going to help activate the lower portion of your butt muscles. Three, and the core muscles around your hips. Four, and five. Sink it down. Now bend your knees. Make sure the feet are right in alignment with your hips. And then up and down. Keep the hips nice and stable. Up with the knee, down. And you want to feel a nice cumulative burn along the outside, the outer edges of your upper thigh into your butt muscles. All right, so let that be nice and I'm, I'm feeling, I'm definitely feeling that. I hope you're feeling this too, okay? So what we're gonna do is take this movement into a standing posture that requires intensive activation of the legs. And you should feel this work really pay off. Now, up with the leg, down, up, down up and down now don't try to hike the hip remember the hips got to stay level now hold and we're going to hold that for five flex your foot two three four you can do it don't let go this is the hard one and five good okay let's wrap it around and let's try the other side the second side's always harder because that first hip the one that's on the floor is actually working quite hard even to create the stability okay so point your toes pull the ribs in lean your chest lean the the, the hips a little forward you can use that hand forward for balance or you can hold onto your hip all right so remember the hip turns a little inward and we're lifting the heel upward one keep this whole area of the body elongated and smooth and we want to do about 20 of these and if you don't start to feel a burn at 20 you may be stronger than i am so you might need to do 30 do not wobble I just wobbled a little we want to avoid the wobbling generally it's better you know when you're doing any movement to be inwardly focused rather than talking so right now I'm talking to you so you can be inwardly focused all right now if I were doing this on my own I would just be closing my eyes or watching my body and I just let the hip hike a little don't do that lean the chest forward a little ribs pull in I'm starting to feel this on this side even more than the other and the second side is always harder so don't feel like you're doing something wrong reach up with the heel keep the feet super pointed and the pelvic floor nice and firm so we're integrating the legs into the pelvic floor and reach and reach and reach, let's do like three more of these, okay? I'm not sure, I'm probably more than 20 by now, but more is always better in this case, right? You can always do a few extras. Now let it down, bend your knees, feet in alignment with the butt. I'm just checking to make sure, you know. Then hold on to your hip, up and down, up and down, and we'll just do about 10 of these, all right? And you wanna press back and squeeze in. Press back and squeeze in. Don't do anything mindlessly, because if you do it mindlessly, then in the yoga practice, it's almost no purpose, right? So we're gonna do everything mindfully. Ooh, and I'm really mindful now of my right hip because it is really burning, really burning. I hope yours is burning too. Okay, let's open it up and open it up. We'll just do five of these. Don't hike the hip, keep the hip down. And then two more. You can do it, if I can do it, you can do it too. The last one and hold, hold, two, three, Four, burning right here, that's a good sign. And five. Oh, oh my goodness. Now, 
If you work that area of the body, before we move on, we have to stretch it out. So that easy stretch outward, the knees to the side, just drop over and pivot oh, into the hips. Well, I can really feel the hips when I do this and just let it relax for a moment. Let everything go, soften your body, soften your breath. You don't need to turn the head to the side. I'm just doing that so I can still chat with you. If it's more comfortable, you can place your head right onto your wrists. And we should be feeling that, again, a burn right in the area we just worked. If you get too strong or too flexible in one direction, then you'll always have a little bit of weakness in the body. I definitely have a little too much flexibility down there, so that strength movement really helps me. Okay, now, gently come forward into a squatting position. Inhale, and as you exhale, bring your feet together and fold gently down. All right. Stretch out your hamstrings, squeeze your thighs in towards each other, and then gently look up. All right, now we're ready to try this posture. Sometimes people call this warrior three, but I've learned this as digasana in Sanskrit. So come onto your fingertips. We're gonna take it easy to start off with. Reach your back leg back and point your foot. Look down and see if your foot is level with your hip and, or if it's turned out. If it's turned out, turn it in. And we're gonna use that same strength that we just worked on in the hip to keep it nice and stable. We'll stay right here for five breaths. Look up, one, two, three, Four, and easy, sink your leg down. Good, let's try the other side. Send your chest a little forward, tip the leg back, reach it up. Don't go for super high, just keep the foot right in alignment with your hip, and the hip turned a little in. One, two, three, four, and sink it down, inhale, exhale all the way down. Okay, so. Let yourself relax here just for a moment and then we're going to go for the full posture now with the arms straight out. If that was really challenging for you, we need to repeat the motion with the hands on the ground. Okay, so we're going to lift that right leg first, then take your back leg up, get it in place, come forward onto your fingertips and send your hands forward. One, two, three, four, and open your arms. One, two, Three, integrate the legs with the body. Four and five, arms straight out ahead. One, strong legs, two, three, four. Fingertips on the ground, check your leg and exhale all the way down. Good, so we should feel that movement again right through the legs and integrating the legs in the body brings a sense of relaxation. We do have to do the next side. Always that second side is harder because the first leg's a little exhausted. Come a little forward onto your fingertips, reach. Send the chest forward, inwardly rotate your left thigh, transfer the weight into your standing leg. One, two, three, hands in alignment with the shoulders, four, and five, open up. That was a little fast counting. One, two, keep rolling that thigh inward, three, four, and straighten up. One, two, reach back with the leg and forward with the hands, four, and five, the fingertips to the ground, check your leg, get everything nice and stable, and then bring it down, inhale, exhale, all the way down. Gently bend your knees, and step back to plank position, pull the knees towards the chest, and lower down. Even though the knees don't come to the chest, inhale, upward facing. The activity of pulling the knees forward to the pelvis, even up to the chest will help. Connect the legs into the body. Exhale, downward facing. Rest in downward facing just for a moment. Feel your legs, feel the stability through your legs and through your thighs. And then inhale, look forward. Jump, cross your feet, and let's lie all the way down. From lying down, we're not completely done. I'm going to do some movements with just the legs. Straighten up the legs. Connect them into the pelvic floor. Wrap your hands around, almost like you're gonna do a sit-up, and then we're bending the knees. Pull your pubic bone up, and then fold your knees into your armpit, and actively press your knees into the armpits. We're gonna hold this for five. One, two, make yourself a tight little ball. Three, four, inhale, lying a little bit down, but don't go all the way down. Stretch out your legs, and hold it here. One, two, lift it up, three, Four, and a little relax, bring in, and lift up again. One, two, three. Don't do this just from the abdominal muscles. Connect the legs into this activation. Four, and a little stretch. Stretch out the legs, 
and up. One, two, three, you could do it, four. And easy, lie down. Keep your legs up in the air. Good, now from here, let's just relax the back for a moment. Nice and steady. So, whenever you're working with the core, you want the core and the legs to be connected. You don't want to just squeeze with the core and let your legs be heavy. Instead, really pull the legs in towards the interior space of the body. Okay, so from here, take your hands on the ground and gently lower down. And when you're down, I want you to hold. One, two, squeeze your thighs towards each other. Three, four, now point your toes. Look down for a moment, good. Open your legs, close. Open, close. We're gonna do that 10 times. Open, close. And when you open, point outward. Close, open, close. Open and close. Use your legs. Feel the butt muscles integrate into the core. We're gonna do this four more times. Open, close. I'm a bad counter. It probably ends up more than 10. So I'm sorry if you're suffering, okay? Let's just do two more. Outward, inward. Outward, inward. Now hold it in. Hold, 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 hold. Hold, squeeze your legs, feel the thighs working, and pick it up. Oh, so whenever you feel your legs really drawing into the center, you want that again to be integrated. Now, gently wrap your head around, open out the knees, and hold. One, two, three, four, left knee in, right leg out. One, two, three, Four, and switch. One, two, three, four, and switch. One, two, three, four. Head down, hands by, and hold. Squeeze your thighs in towards each other. One, two, lower bellies inside as much as you can. Three, squeeze your thighs. Four, and five, take it up. And gently bend down. We're almost done. Thankfully, <laughs> I hope you felt a little fire and heat coming into the body, but not completely done yet, okay? Roll over to the side, come all the way up. We got one more test to see if you can really integrate the legs with the work that we've been doing. So now we started off just lifting the legs, but now we're gonna see if we can get the whole body completely off of the ground. Ready to try? Hope you're ready to try. Okay, so here we go. Hands next to the hips, just like this, all right? Hands next to the hips. Then, you'll use your thighs to integrate them into your pelvic floor. You'll make the body almost into an L shape, and then dragging the legs back will automatically lift your legs off of the ground. So here we go, you lean it forward, firm the shoulder girdle, flex your feet and lift your thighs into the pelvic floor, and inhale up, one, two, Three, four, and take it down. Let's do that again. All right, hands forward. This is everything that we've done together today, all put into one big movement. Take it forward, integrate, and up. One, two, three, four, and down. Last time, you can do it, it's just five. If your feet don't come off the ground, you just push the floor and you keep integrating your legs into the interior space of your pelvis and one day, poof, your thighs and your butt will come off the ground. Lean it forward, press and drag. One, two, three, four, one more, and five. Okay, feel the quadriceps working. So it's the quadriceps connected through the back of the thighs into the pelvic floor. Cross your feet, take it forward, step your legs back, inhale and exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, roll forward to upward facing. Exhale, easy of your toes, downward facing. Let's just take a few breaths in downward facing. Equalize the breath. Inwardly turn the mind. And nice and easy, look forward, press through the hands, step, step. And let's just easy lie down. Gently in the lying down position, get as comfortable as possible. Pull the right knee into your chest, inhale. And exhale, move it over to the side. Stretch your right hand all the way out. And we're just relaxing the body. Coming to an easy space. Let everything go, let your mind soften. 
Let a happy attitude of gratitude take root inside of your body. Be grateful for yourself for doing this practice. Be grateful for the practice, for its existence. Be grateful for your teachers that have opened your mind to the practice. Gently pull your right knee into your chest, squeeze it in, stretch it all the way out. Left knee, squeeze it into your chest, little point your toes, and then cross the center line of the body, stretch your left arm out. And if you want to, you can look over to the left side. Don't force, you know, if your hand is off the ground, that's okay. It doesn't need to look exactly like what I'm doing. Just go in this general position. Easy, soft, and relaxed. In fact, you could close your eyes and just let a soft smile roll over your lips. A smile of appreciation, a smile of acceptance, a smile of wisdom. In the yoga practice, the highest form of knowledge is the knowledge that you gain from direct experience. So the yoga practice gives you the tool of the asanas, the postures, your breath, and your point of focus really during the practice for you to experience the essence of the practice. Only when you experience it to be true are the deeper statements of inner connection really meant to be true. And then back all the way into the center, hug that knee into your chest and all the way down. Let's just close our eyes and easy relax for a moment. Make sure your sacrum is planted on the ground, no pressure on your low back. Nice long inhalation and nice long exhalation. Just let your mind drop its awareness into the sensation of the breath. And allow your inhalation and exhalation to be relaxed. If you feel any residual tension in your hands or your feet, just give your fingers and toes a little wiggle. And if your mind is jumping around towards many places, allow yourself to focus a little bit closely on the exhalation. And as the exhalation just pitters out of the body like the outflowing tide, see your thoughts just flow away with the tide. Let your mind have that image of the tide. If you're familiar with the ocean, or here in Miami, you could see the beautiful ocean and the tide rolling in. And as the tide rolls in, it's like the inhalation, blanketing your body with the energy of your life force. And when the tide rolls out, it's relaxation and release along with the exhalation so that we can feel that balance between the energy coming in and everything that we would like to let go of. From this space of relaxation and this space of peace, gently bend your knees. And then from this place of relaxation, let's offer a gentle prayer for all of the wounds of the past, any past hurt or past trauma or any past negativity that you may have experienced that may be taking root in your body. May that be cleansed and healed. So you can say to yourself, may I be free from suffering. May all of the wounds of the past be healed. And may the spirit of the practice May the spirit of divinity, may the spirit of grace open a doorway from the past into the future. And may that same grace give me the strength to walk from the past into that open doorway into the future. And may that same grace give me the strength to carry forward even though I may be hurt from the wounds of the past. Let that openness in your heart carry you forward into the positivity of the future, building a better life for yourself, one breath at a time. Knees into your chest with that happy prayer, squeeze it in, roll over to the side, and come all the way up. So I like to think of the practice as a way that we can um, weed out the garden of the mind. So in the mind, we carry thoughts with us. Just like if you have a garden, there are many different plants that grow. And thoughts that are related to negativity, you know, hurts of the past that we somehow can't let go of, anger, resentment, depression, anxiety, this sort of thing, they're weeds in the garden of the mind. So, so every time that we can do our practice and get rid of some of those old weeds in the garden of the mind that we're carrying, around that's good but not only should we do that we have to sow the new seeds the seeds of flowers and fruits and beautiful plants that offer us shade and beauty in our lives so we want to sow those seeds and those are the seeds of gratitude those are the seeds of strength and grace and we can pray for those every day both for our own life and for the life of everyone around us the yoga practice has the potential to make you a happier healthier more peaceful person but it only works if you take responsibility for your journey no one can do it for you except for you. And once you set your
your intention to build a more peaceful life, then the beautiful flowers will start to bloom in the garden of your mind. I hope you're inspired to do this every day. Thank you so much for watching. Namaste.